Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to do this starfish. He's a pretty accurate depiction of some starfishes, but starfishes all look quite different. But this is the one we're going to be doing. I'm going to be doing it in this sparkly pink. So it's not going to be the same color, but this is still four weight worsted. This was a four weight worsted. And then this white is just a um, four-way white. I will be using a 4.5 hook for this. And we're going to start with the points of the star because we need to make five of them. And I'm not going to make all five of them with you. So we're going to start with the points. And then we sew all of them together. Or crochet all of them together, not sew. So, so... I'm going to start with the first point with you, and then you can go ahead and... Oh, I knew there was a knot in there somewhere. Um, and then you can go ahead and make all your other five points. So you're going to start with a magic ring. And six single crochets. So your next round is going to be one, because we want our starfish to be pointy. Um, our next round is just going to be one single crochet and an increase. You're going to need a stitch marker because we're not slip stitching or chaining. We're doing this amigurumi style. So we're going to go right into the stitch. And we're going to put the marker. That's one single crochet, and then your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. This is not a worsted yarn. This is a four-way, because I just got snagged. Oh, I might have got snagged on the sparkly stuff. I think this might be a four-way. Anyway, this may come out smaller than the one I had, but... One single crochet increase all the way around, giving you nine stitches. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. This brings you up to 12 stitches. That's number one with your marker, always number one. Your next stitch gets one single crochet. So that's two single crochets, and then your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. You can flip this around if you want. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. That's three single crochets. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. That's four single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space.
So you should have 18 stitches. From here you're going to do seven rows of one single crochet in each of those 18 stitches and you're going to fasten off. You're going to fasten off all of them except the very last one. You're going to stay attached and we're going to meet back here. So every single one of them, so you need to build five. I'm going to leave you to build five. The first screen you're going to read is going to be the continuation of building it, so seven rows of one single crochet. The next screen you're going to see is going to be the pattern to build the entire star point. You need to do five, well, you need five all together, so after this one you do four, four more star points. Once you have all five of your star points, the very last one you build, you're going to stay attached. And then we're going to meet back here and we're going to crochet all of them together. So that's what's going to go on. So for now, just worry about following my screen prompts and doing your seven rows of one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So I've got my um, all my pieces done. We're going to start crocheting them all together. So uh, don't worry about your stragglers right now. We'll worry about them after. However, the spaces that they're in, I think I pulled that through for some reason. The spaces that they're in, when we attach, we're going to attach right next to where you fastened off so what we're going to attach by going into this stitch with every single one of them so I just want to make sure I didn't pull my yarn through every one of them yep I did it's such a habit to pull my yarn through that next stitch that I think I did it for all of them so if you did that like I did then you can just pull them out so the last one you weren't supposed to fasten off of so hopefully you didn't. So we're going to do our one single crochet to get our marker in place. And then we're going to add one. So we're just going to come across, stick our hook into there. We're going to yarn over so you can just let that flip over and you're going to make a stitch. And then that counts as one. So you're going to do eight stitches. So that counts as the first stitch. So this is eight. It brings me all the way to the other side of the petal. I can't seem to get my yarn out. We grab the next one and we do the same thing. We're going to go in beside where we fastened off. You're going to pull tight. You're going to make the stitch. I just flip it over. That counts as your first stitch. Now you're going to do eight single crochets. And that's number one. So that's two. And you're going to do the same for all the other ones.
Now that you've got them all attached, you're just going to crochet all the way back around to your marker. I didn't put a number down, so I don't know. So you're going to come around to the spot where you fastened off, and it's going to be a little tough to put a stitch in there, but you can try. I more or less just push the spot over my hook. So that's my knot from where I fastened off. I've got no other stitches. Actually, that's not true. I got one more stitch. I can probably fit in there. That would cut down on my sewing. So go in as far as you think you can with your you can even share this space and that'll cut down on the sewing in between. So <clears throat> my numbers are probably not going to be the same as your numbers because after this because I don't know what you're doing as far as where you're putting your stuff. So because I shared that space I don't normally share the space. I normally just um, sew it with a piece of straggler, but we'll see how it turns out. I didn't do that on my last one. So I just <clears throat> try to get into every space I can that's available. If that helps. So on your very last one, just do your eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So once you got your eight single crochets across on your last one, make sure you've got this laying correctly. You're going to come across eight single crochets over from this one. So two, four, six, eight. And you're going to go into that eight stitch. And that's how you're going to join them. Just like that. So you should have five. Obviously that's what we made. And that's how you join them. So at this point my marker is way over here. I need to move it. At this point, we're going to move our marker to right here. And we're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. So this is what you should have. I just tucked all my stragglers down inside. So this is what you should have. It's a little awkward at first. And I won't be giving you any numbers because everybody's numbers are going to be different. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. And if you have extra room 
after your sequence, just put single crochets in there. Because again, I don't know what your numbers are. That's number one. That's three single crochets, and then your decrease. Now, if you want to do invisible decreases, knock your socks off. And repeat. That's three single crochets, and then your decreases. Go into your stitch, pull up a loop. Go into the next stitch, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through all three. That's a decrease. all the way around. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase, or a decrease. <laughs> That's number one with your marker. That's number two, and then your decrease all the way around. <clears throat> and then after that, you can do one single crochet in each stitch, and I will see you on the other side. So this would just look like a massive gobbledygook at this point, and that's because we're building this hump. It'll all go into shape, but we need a certain shape. This side's going to be completely different than what we do up here. So um, it should look like a bunch of gobbledygook, but if you look at the picture of starfishes, the one that I've replicated anyway, there's plenty of them, but the one I've replicated looks like this and then their face is actually down here eyes and mouth are down below and I didn't put anything on because it's nobody would see it so but that's the one I'm doing so this kind of feels and looks like uh, just a mess of crap right now your next row is going to be one single crochet and a decrease so whatever stitch stitches you've had extra throughout you're going to continue to have them so it's no big deal I've had to put three extra stitches outside my sequence. That's number one. And then your decrease. Jump right into it. All the way around. And then we're just gonna we're gonna be finished after this. We're just gonna do a de simple decrease after this. Not not the one single crochet. So I'll just worry about this row for now. One single crochet decrease all the way around. I haven't been counting my stitches, so I have no idea what my number is, but you don't really need to worry about your numbers as far as this goes. It's just a starfish. If it looks like a starfish at the end, then you're good. It can be awkward, I get it, but it's so cute. You could put a front face, actually that finished my sequence. You could put a front face on them, like a face somewhere at the top if you do like a cartoonish type of a face, but. Um, so this row, you're just going to decrease around and then cinch the rest of it shut. So you don't need to mark anymore. I'm probably only going to do it part way around. I don't need that big of a hole, but I don't need a real small one either. So decrease until you're satisfied.
Maybe one more time and then I'll um, fasten off. I knew I was going to catch that. There's uh, some of this sparkly stuff is hard to deal with sometimes. So fasten off. We're going to have to reattach to do the other side. This side gets the, uh, the cinch close. Well, the other side we're going to cinch close too. We're just going to not do such a big thing on the other side. It's going to be a way faster. So just grabbing one piece of yarn, you're going to go in one and out the other. All the way around. You don't need to pull yet. In and out. You can do every other one too if you want to. doesn't really matter as long as you go in and out to cinch this up. That's good enough for me. So I'm just going to pull. Now I need to secure my cinch. Maybe. With a, uh, a knot. So I'm going to pull back and forth and that's going to tighten that right down. Um, for now, you can just leave this. We don't need to worry about that for now. Um, I want you to, before we start, put stuffing in your points, and then we'll, we'll reattach and start that. You don't need to overstuff. Like, you don't need a whole lot. Just make sure when you're stuffing it that you have what you want in each tip. You're not really going to be able to come back and shove it down the tip again. So this gives you a better idea of what you're working with. So, make a slip knot. We're going to reattach. Oh my gosh. You're going to reattach wherever you want to start, and you're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. I'm going to start in a weird, easy spot. So when you reattach, make sure that goes tight. You're going to reattach and then in the same space you're going to put a stitch. Because your reattachment isn't going to count as a stitch. So now we're going to do one, cro one single crochet in each stitch around. And again, I have no idea what your numbers are going to be. And it's very, very awkward. I am just about, this is where I started. I'm just about back around. I've got a few stitches left. There was one there that had one piece of yarn, so I did not go into it. You may have found that in a couple of places. So when you come back around, even though we're doing this amigurumi, I just want you to slip stitch into that space. But don't you don't have to chain one, you just need to slip stitch. Um, this guy can get shoved down into your thing. 
So, I want you to put a stitch marker right here. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. So you want these to kind of fold up a bit, because that's what starfishes do. You just make sure that your stuffing is getting down into that area as well. So I'm probably going to jam some more down after I can cut this off. That's just my weave from before. You can fasten off You just need a long enough tail to cinch this closed This is pretty crappy stuff to work with I would suggest not working with it Of course, I'm not a fan of a lot of red hearts. Um, go into, like we did before, just one piece and out the next. If you wanted to skip every other one, you can do so. It's not going to make that big of a difference, I don't think. I've never done it, so I don't know. I don't think I've ever done it. I can't even get out of this other stitch without getting caught on this sparkly stuff. The stuff's pretty, but my gosh. So before I cinch this closed, I'm going to put a little more stuffing in it. Just because I don't feel like it has enough. I'm not sure how I got wrapped around my leg. But so, once you pull your cinch closed, you can make a knot and secure that cinch. So it does kind of look spread open like this, but we, um, yeah, see I still didn't put enough stuffing in there. I still got this needs some stuffing. I'll move my stuffing around after I'm not on camera anymore, but anyway. I'm going to secure my cinch again since um, I had to pull so hard. I just don't feel like it's uh, that tight. So once you've got your cinch done, 
you can just go in and weave back and forth. Yeah, I gotta move my stuffing around a lot. Getting stuck around these legs. So just decide what you want the top and the bottom to look like. I gotta move some stuffing over here. I did not stuff mine very good. Anyway, um, you're going to need some white because we're going to be putting the white on and then we're going to be raising this area that we put the white on. Do you see? That's where it all raised. So, I had a crap ton of yarn because you got to go all the way around. So get your white, thread it, put a double knot on the end. So it doesn't really matter where you go in, it just matters where you come out. So pick whatever side you're going to be on. I'm going to go in through the bottom and out the top. Perfect preferably somewhere in the middle because I'm just going to start I mean we're going to have to move our yarn around but and you just certainly don't have to do this you can just be done with the video here if you wanted to so I've got a lot of yarn I'm just going to pull that through so I am not pulling the knot in I'm going to poke it in later all right, we're going to go up and down and we're going to move our yarn. My uh, card was full. I had to uh, find another card to put in my camera. Um, so we're going to make our little marks all the way up. So I just want you to go down somewhere and come back up into this area. So when you pull, leave a loop. We're going to go through the loop. This is just my thing. I don't know if it's a stitch. I don't know. I just did it and I liked it. And then I'm just going to pull up. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go down. Sorry. I'm going to go this way. I forgot what I did. So I went down into the same stitch. I came up. I pulled through the miles of yarn. I went through the stitch. So I pulled down and then I pulled up. And that's how I made those markings. So go down into the same space you were just in and pop out in another spot. You're going this way up the up the star thing. Pull until you get a loop. Go through the loop. Pull down just to make it smaller and then pull up and it does that. Well, it's just what I decided to do. If you know a better way, you can knock your socks off. I don't even, like I said, I don't even know if this is a stitch. Through the loop. Pull down, pull up. So it's going to loosen when you let go of it, obviously, but each time you do it, it's going to tighten the whole roll. It just won't tighten that one stitch. It'll pull everything as it's all attached. Oops. Go through the loop properly. So 
So just pull it down so you make it small and then pull it up. So now that I'm at the top, pull it to make sure that it's all tight and then I'm going to again go down the same hole and I'm just moving my yarn at this point. I'm not sewing. So I'm going to move my yarn down back up to the middle however way you want to do it. If you've got an extra long hook then that's great. Um, or needles, sorry. Me, I don't so I had to come out into a rest spot. <laughs> And then I'm going to come back out to the middle. Again, I'm not sewing. I'm just moving my yarn. So I'm back up to the middle and I'm going to do the next one. So I'm just going to go right next door to where I came off because I don't need to restart like the, what we did at the beginning. I don't need to do that every time. I just need to start doing my stitches. So that is my white. I'm just going to come out the bottom side. Now, if you pull too hard, you can just pop it back out. So, I've got a lot of white left, but I'm going to cut some of that off. So, we have our knot here from where we started. I'm just going to make another knot. And I'm going to poke both of them down. So you can make this one a double or a single, it doesn't matter. But when you cut it off, make sure you leave a little bit of a nubby. I'm just going to shorten my nubby on that one. And then poke these down. Get them out of the way. So you can leave it like this if you want, or you can raise. I raised all of this because that's what a, it's so hard to see on camera, but I raised all of the, right, all along the white because that's how it is with a starfish. So, you just needed a piece of pink or whatever color you're using. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to make a knot. So it doesn't matter where you come in, it just matters where you come out. So I want obviously my knot to be at the back here. So I am going to come out the top where I need to start my um, one of my ridges. I feel there's more sewing in this project than there is anything. So to start, I'm going to go right next door to my lead and I'm going to go on a diagonal and I'm going to pop out across from my lead. This is just to get started. This isn't how we're going to do it. So you can squeeze and pull. I'm going to go back in next door and I'm going to pop out where I went in the last time. So this is just to get started. So pinch and pull. So what you're going to do the whole way around is you're going to go into the next stitch or you can go wider. It doesn't matter. It's up to you how wide you want to go and how wide you want to go out this way and how wide you want to go between your lead and where you go in. But you're going to go in right next to your lead wherever. You're going to pop out wherever. depends on the whip that you want. And you're going to pull. And you're going to pinch at the same time. 
then you're going to go right in next door again, preferably in the same kind of a width. And that's all you're going to do. You're just going to go back and forth, pulling and pinching, and it raises, you can see on your own project, that it raises this area. So you can choose whether you want to do this or not. It actually goes fairly quickly when I'm not, you know, teaching. It goes fairly quick. And like I said, you can go as close or as, as wide as you want. I uh, generally get wider as I go up. So ultimately all it's doing is giving it a raised look, which is what a starfish has, is this raised look. So you don't have to go all the way to the center. You can start your next raised look here so go in next to your actually let me go one more because I think I'm a little far away let me go I'm just gonna do a small one oops I'm not doing that right now I'm trying to do a whip stitch all right let me thread this again I'm going to go in one more. So, when I come back around to this side to go back in, I'm going to scooch over here so I can start this side. So I'm basically coming out the same hole I just went in. And then I'm going to start across this way, but I'm going to start diagonally just like we started our last one. We're going to start this one the exact same way. So pull and pinch. You've got all this extra space to be able to pull and pinch and this will lift this right up. So now just come across and do your cross stitches. So when you get up to the top of this, you're going to have to do the same thing that you did with your weight. You're just going to have to move your yarn. That's it. Easy peasy. So I'm just going to go down into my magic ring from my where I did that thing. Now I can't. I don't have a long enough needle to go all the way back down. So I got to move mine. Back down into the same hole and pop out where you want to start your next ridge. And start it all over again. So I got all my raised edges and it looks like this. So all I'm going to do is go down into my magic ring like I have been doing with each one and I'm going to move my yarn to the back where my other one is. Again, if you pull too tight, just clunk that up like that. I am going to tie a knot and I'm going to poke all of this in, nubby and all. And there we have it. It's our starfish. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.